Boom! You thought this was just another regular AOL intro? No! We're gonna do this to the max! I'm here, Counselor Seb here to give you the perfect soccer intro to tell you the skills you need to do to be able to become the best soccer player you can be and it can happen right in your backyard. But first, some stretches. Hi, welcome to Seth's Stretching Corner. We like to take it a little easier here. Uh, I'm going to show you some dynamic stretches. These are in comparison to static stretches. Static stretches are where you just stay in one place and, and you kind of just pull your uh, muscles to their extents. Uh, dynamic stretching is actually better for mobility, which is why certain soccer players, runners, um, or, or many other sports that involve a lot of movement, they use dynamic stretching instead. So I'm going to give you a couple of quick examples uh, for the best ways to prepare yourself for a soccer game. You should always be stretching before you do any amount of soccer. So stretch your muscles and they'll reward you back with some great exercise afterwards. So first we're going to do some Frankensteins. That involves you kind of putting your arms up forward and your legs going. This helps stretches out your legs a bit. You'll definitely feel if you're doing it right, you'll definitely feel along the back of your legs here. And you can walk any certain distance while doing it. You look pretty funny while doing it too, so that's awesome. Now do that for a bit, but once you finish your Frankensteins, then you want to move to butt kicks. Butt kicks will involve you hitting the back of your butt <laughs> with your heels, and you kind of run in place doing this. And you should feel that a lot right here on your quads, the outside of your quads. Do that for a bit. When you feel loose, then you want to move into high knees. That's the opposite of the butt kicks. So the high knees. If you're doing them right, you should feel them here on the other side. And then we want to work on the inside. So we just to be outside, we want to work on the inside of our legs. So now we're gonna do closed gate. That for a little bit, then you want to open the gate. So, once you get all this area stretched out, now you want to kind of do some full leg motions. So, we're going to do front and back leg swings. You should feel that pretty much about everywhere once you start doing it right. On the leg, I mean. When you swing up, you should feel it here. When you swing back, you should feel it here. And then, switch legs. And then do some lateral leg swings. This will get the other parts of your leg that you've missed. Need, you're terrible at balance like I am, you might want to find a, a wall to attach to to anchor yourself. Switch your legs. You can see I use my arms to keep balance as well. And then finally, the part that many soccer players overlook right before they uh, stretch for a soccer game is your ankles. When you get older, your ankles start crapping out on you, so you need to make sure to stretch those a lot. That involves kind of just rotating your foot like this. And this way you'll have the best flexibility when approaching a soccer game. Now, there are some other stretches that you want to do uh, as a soccer player, like helping out your arms a bit, getting your torso stretched, all that stuff. We're going to skip those today just because you don't need them for this particular exercise, but I'd recommend looking into those when you want to do some like full-fledged soccer games. So, all right, let's move into the drills. So, when people often think of soccer practice, they often think of shooting into a goal or uh, doing a lot of sprints or something. 
I think one of the best aspects of soccer is having great control over the ball. And you can do exercises that enhance those abilities right here in your backyard. All you need is a soccer ball and perhaps some things that signify what could be a cone. I found some bricks over there that I'm gonna use for future uh, drills. But right now you don't need anything other than your feet and a soccer ball. We're gonna do a drill called outside, inside. That just involves you touching every part of the ball with every part of your foot. You need to get used to being able to touch anywhere so you can easily avoid a, an opponent, get around an opponent, or even receive a pass uh, very easily. So uh, real quick, I'm gonna show you outside, inside. That involves you hitting the ball with your outside foot and then hitting the inside of your foot and switching feet and hitting with the outside of your foot and then the inside of your foot. So you're getting all parts of your feet covered with the ball. And when you do it fast, it can kind of look like this. You can see that the quarantine has not been kind to my soccer skills. I'm gonna have to actually work on this a bit myself. But once you do this, you should be able to get just about any touch on the ball. And you can imagine how in a game, if there was someone near me, I could then very easily, hopefully dribble around them quite well. So you wanna try this for about five minutes or so, and then you can get really used to the ball. You can even go a little farther with your touches. You can even go outside, outside, inside, which is a wild variation. Like that uh, or you can do just outside outside you can switch it up any way you want if you feel yourself being a little weaker on certain parts of your feet those are the parts that you want to start practicing with this drill outside in uh, or you can do inside inside anything of that nature so that's our first drill and now for the drill I am possibly the worst at and I need to work on, which is why I'm going to show it to you today. We just went over how to effectively coordinate yourself around the ball with your feet, but let's say you're in a game, you're running and you get a brilliant pass from someone, but it's a lob ball, right? It's going over your shoulder. You need to find some way to trap it and be able to score it yourself, right? You want the glory, take the glory, but before you get the glory, you need to practice with this particular drill. So. This involves just practicing how to trap the ball before you can do anything else with it. So, either with a partner or yourself, you can just simply lob up the ball and try to trap it the best with your feet. I'd recommend when trying to trap a ball, you angle your feet so that when you hit the ball, you trap it at an angle right here so that it doesn't have many other angles to go. The best way you can do this is to orient yourself so that when receiving the ball, it lands in front of you and starts bouncing in front of you so that your next touch can deliver you closer to the goal. So I'm going to show you what this might look like. Hopefully, we'll see if this goes well. So you lob it up, you touch it, and then you're ready to go straight to the goal. Now, if you're better than this than I am, you'll be able to lob it and trap it so that it doesn't even bounce close to the amount that I was having it bounce. So let's see if I can do this. So you can see there that I was quickly ready to score the goal at a moment's notice within two touches. One touch to drop it, then another touch to shoot it. Ideally, that's what you're supposed to be able to do. Or if you're Lionel Messi, you should just be able to rail it with just a one touch, but you know, none of us are really quite there yet. So you can do this in many different ways. If you're near a wall, you can even just throw up the wall and try to trap it like that and start going. Uh, or if you want, if you're really up for a challenge and some exciting stuff, launch the ball up in the air <laughs> and try to trap it. Uh, as you can see, not the best of this. There are many variations that you can do to try to trap it. But the idea is you want to just have it land on the ground as close to you as possible in front of you so that that next touch, you're, you're ready to go for the goal. With this past two exercises, we were able to learn how to coordinate ourselves around with the ball, but then also learn how to trap the ball. And that leads us to our final drill for your backyard exercises, the way to become a pro soccer player. You keep working at these three particular drills and you'll be an asset anywhere on the field. So we're gonna incorporate those past two exercises into our final one, which is finally a passing drill. You wanna find yourself 
uh, a surface like this that will hopefully rebound the ball in a general direction back towards yourself so that when you pass it, you do not need a partner to pass it back to you. However, if you are with someone else, then they could easily just be that wall for you and pass it to you uh, at, at your command. So, uh, you can see here that I have two quote unquote cones. They're just bricks. These are actually a lot more uh, consequence driven. If I happen to hit one of those, those are going to hurt a lot more than cones. So, maybe this will help me train a little more. I don't know. Essentially, you're going to try to pass the ball, have a rebound back to you, work on your trapping skills, and then your next touch it should be to the other side of these two cones, where you're then going to pass it to this side, receive it, trap it, come over here, and then pass it this way. With this, you can practice on your passing, receiving, and dribbling all in one exercise. It's a quality exercise, and I recommend it to anyone. Now, because of the nature of this fence and my current skill as a soccer player, I don't know how well I'm going to be able to do this. So maybe it's something that we need to work on together. But hopefully I can show enough of a demonstration to show you what I mean with this particular drill. So you want to pass it, and then when it comes to you, and sometimes it won't come to you. Sometimes you'll need to go out to it, bring it back in, and come around the cones. This honestly helps you to a variety of situations that you need to adapt to. But once you kick it, here you go. Touch. That pass in, touch. There you go. Touch. And the ball goes anywhere. And you need to be able to adapt to that situation to be able to touch. Once you're doing this exercise, you can start limiting the amount of touches that you can take. So maybe I can limit myself to, let's say, I can only touch it to receive it, and then touch it once, and then pass it. So I can only do three touches in all. Check that. So, here you go. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. And that way you can kind of work on your skill to be able to put the ball where you need to without too many touches. You can even do something like maybe two touches. Let's see if I can do that. Get the pass. Uh, I'll try again. Get the pass. One, two. Oh. I had something there for a little bit. But yeah, those are the three drills that you need to do to become a better soccer player. Something that you can do anywhere, including your backyard, your room, maybe not your bedroom, maybe just your backyard. But if you have a soccer ball and some feet, and maybe something to mark your path, you're good to go. And that'll end it today for Seth's guide to becoming a pro soccer player. See you next time. Like and subscribe down below and comment some things that I did wrong or maybe something that you'd you'd like to do with soccer. I don't know. Who knows? Take care, guys.